And now for the Monerotopia price report section. All right. So, um, yeah, actually, Monero price is like currently spiking. This Let's go down to like the 15-minute chart here. As we were talking, Monero price spiked. Oh, not I mean, not hugely, but, you know, for an hour, we got up 2%. So this is a nice little spike. Um, it's good to be getting back up to this uh, to these blue bands right here. So that was kind of where we where we left off a few weeks ago. Uh, that kind of posed a, a little bit of resistance for the Monero price. Um, what is that? The daily? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, we still have a little bit of ways to go to really like get back into um, into sort of a clear bullish scenario here. Um, but things are still looking pretty good at the moment. I think. Um, Bitcoin is actually outperforming us ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this doesn't look terrible. Um, definitely, definitely there's room for improvement here on, on the Monero price. I would like to see us get further. Really, I mean, I want to see us back up at this level, right? I want to see us in this, at this long-term upper standard deviation band that was formed from the blow-off <clears throat> the blow off top in, uh, in 2021. So that would put us right around a little, above, a little bit above $200. Um, I think that's... Like we really, really need to to get back up to those levels if we want to think that we're that we're about to go for another um, sustained concerted bull market. So um, probably there's still a little bit of ways to go there. One thing that does happen with price uh, very often across the board is that you just get these massive spikes that seemingly come out of nowhere. Typically with crypto, I think those are that's more orchestrated by you know insiders and um, and market makers and and exchanges and whatnot. So we might have to earn that organically. Nevertheless, Monero does seem to have like a larger and a growing presence across the space. Uh, okay, so here we've got the XMR BTC ratio. And uh, as we just mentioned a second ago, yeah, B Bitcoin has, has definitely been performing a little bit better than Monero has been. So um, basically kind of taking a pullback. Again, super obvious level right here for resistance to happen. Um, I was really hoping that we would actually get above that. There looks like there was this moment here where if Monero price could keep going, we could actually reestablish in those bands. Um, at this moment, I'm, I'm actually not liking the way this looks, to be honest, because, um, you know, seeing, seeing as how we basically got rejected off those, off those upper standard deviation bands, we're now, we're now playing in this kind of more local chart pattern where, you know, we had, we had the bottom from, uh, you know, that recent, uh, that recent low uh, in the ratio. And then we had a nice big movement here, but we're already falling out of those upper standard deviation bands. We're already falling out of these blue bands. So that's a lot of noise there on the chart, but the price is already kind of below this, this, uh, those blue bands there. So that's in a way, um, again, technical analysis, take it for what you will. Um, it's not the end all be all of analysis, but Bitcoin does have in a broader sense, a number of positive things going for it, right? He, Bitcoin has Trump, for example, um, saying, Hey, we're going to make Bitcoin great again. We're going to, um, I can't remember. Maybe you guys can tell me if, did he say that they're going to, that they're going to back the U S dollar with some kind of like strategic Bitcoin reserve, or, or did they say something about a strategic Bitcoin reserve? Um, there was there, I felt like there was rumors floating out there, but I hadn't, I hadn't heard like a confirmation, um, uh, of that. So that would be really, really bullish for Bitcoin because there's like two, the government, the US government has 220,000 Bitcoin right now sitting in its coffers that they were allegedly going to sell. But hypothetically, if they do to say, hey, we're going to keep all that, that's going to be some kind of reserve. Um, that's that's massively bullish uh, and it absorbs basically all of the Gox negative, um, like negativities that are still kind of looming out there. So the Gox coin, I don't think the Gox coin have been getting repaid yet. They they said a few weeks ago, hey, we're going to do it in July. And then like a week later, they said, well, uh, actually, we need some more time, which is kind of weird, whatever. OK, you know, there's kind of another interesting thing here. Uh, sorry, I know we're on the Monero charts here, but um, not too much exciting has happened in Monero in terms of like the past week. We've had some um, moderate bullish price action, right? We've been rising to the upside, um, but really, you know, nothing. There's really not much to, to talk about here with Monero price. So um, <laughs> in lieu of... Uh, you know, really going crazy on, on searching for things to talk about with the Monero price. Um, you know, we'll, we'll tie this into the broader market here. So um, if you remember last week, we said that Germany sold a bunch of Bitcoin and then they rebought that Bitcoin. So that's a really odd move. Like that's that's very schizophrenic, even for a government. So I wonder to myself, um, if Germany sold that Bitcoin and the U.S. government was like, whoa, hang on, don't do that yet. We're actually going to be doing a thing here with Bitcoin. We've captured it. Um, it's totally surveillance. We're going to grab the mining ecosystem soon enough. Don't sell your Bitcoin. We actually are going to use this to pretend to be freedom advocates. Um, I, I could see that, you know, I could see something like that, right? That's one plausible scenario. There, there's, of course, others. 
Um, but it is it, it is kind of odd that Germany sold like 50,000 Bitcoin and then rebought them all again. So um, right now, you know, in terms of price, that means that Bitcoin does have some positive things going for it. It really does. And you can actually see this. So that's the Bitcoin chart here. Um, you can even see this on the dominance, right? Bitcoin dominance has been hanging on uh, and is like, at this point, it almost feels like it's like it's starting to consolidate at this level. And hypothetically, I'm it now wouldn't be too surprising to me if this thing starts to bump towards the upside. I would go I would I would say that I've turned from being bearish on Bitcoin dominance um, to being somewhat neutral now on Bitcoin dominance. Um, I would like to see some confirmation one way or the other of this story in terms of like the U.S. government's going to hang on to that Bitcoin and not sell it. Um, that could that could definitely be a bullish a bullish thing there. Um, so you'll notice that Bitcoin. So again, we, we talked about this line last week, and this line here is not a support line. It's more of a trend line, right? This right here. So that's not a support line that you break it down. Oh, you know, pack it in, the game's over. Um, it's more like okay, we're just sort of on the negative side of the trend. But Bitcoin has already gotten sort of back into that into that um, range. So at the moment, like this still looks a lot like consolidation. In fact, even if we go, let's say to the monthly, because we were talking about the monthly last week as well and saying, hey, Bitcoin has not broken through the all-time high with strength. At the moment, you could almost, at least from the monthly chart, this almost looks a little bit like a bullish flag, right? This is starting to look a little bit like a bullish flag from the monthly candles. Um, it doesn't quite look exactly the same on the weekly, but it's still, I mean, uh, let's see here. Yeah, it still has that kind of that kind of feel to it. So it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. Um, I don't know why I have that line there. Let's delete that one. Okay. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if this thing is actually setting up um, for, for a breakout to the upside here. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to happen next week. But um, yeah, things after a, a long period of consolidation, Bitcoin does seem to be um, showing some strength now. And if we're going to consider the possibility of some kind of tail risk event, which I think we should be, we'll get to the macro in a second. Um, but especially with the whole, you know, as we talked about a second ago with Trump and all that, and, and um, you know, they, they love to do some kind of financial crisis or just like a general crisis when there's a changing of the guard, when there's a new president that comes in, um, that, that's a very common thing to happen. So I, I think to myself, OK, there could easily be a crisis. We are seeing the macro turn into a direction that's the beginning of tail risk, right? It's, it, we're not there yet. And I know we've been talking about this for, for like a year now. Um, you know, we're kind of, hey, because we want to set our criteria ahead of time. What are we looking for? What are we going to be, what do we need to make sure that we're, that we're not sleeping on? Um, and so we heard it from a lot of people last year. Oh, there's going to be a recession. There's going to be a recession. It was kind of like, well, you know, maybe I was thinking like August, but then the signs didn't manifest. They didn't materialize. So it's like, okay, well, you, you know, you got to come off that thesis. You can't just be like, there's going to be a recession. Um, uh, if, if those signs aren't materializing, well, we are at the very beginning of those signs starting to materialize. So again, the unemployment rate starting to spike, that's that's a telltale sign. Um, but we also have the bonds here, right? We've we've hit the flat top, um, which is which has been the, the pattern for the past two decades, right? So here's 2008, the markets go up as the Fed raises rates, the Fed flat tops and the market keeps going up. And then somewhere as the Fed starts lowering rates and bond and yields start to drop off, that's the time that you start to worry about, um, okay, the market may have peaked. And then when bonds violently crash and the yield curve corrects to normal, that's when like you, you really have, you're in the short hairs effectively. Um, so right now we flat top, the market's still going up. I would anticipate that the market would continue going up. Stocks have taken a bit of a pullback this week, but you know it, it was a pretty sharp pullback if, if you look at it. It really was um, 5% here for, for the NASDAQ. And 5% for the stock market is actually a pretty big move. So um, yeah, stocks are taking a little bit of a pullback, but that does not mean that the fat lady has sung. Um, that does not mean that recession is, is imminently, incipiently upon us. Um, you know, It's probably just a regular pullback. Uh, the other thing too is that I have noticed that crypto and stocks are now starting to trade in a little bit of a, a counter-cyclical fashion. Maybe that's happening um, because these reverse repos are run out. So they, they might be squeezing for liquidity here. <laughs> and I don't mean a liquidity squeeze. I just mean they might be trying to find liquidity because um, they're, they might be having a hard time now that the reverse repos have basically flattened out here um, since April. So it might be that it's like, hey, where, where are we going to get the liquidity from um, to, to pump these assets? All right, well, let's, let's put stocks on hold here and then let's rotate into crypto. Right? Let's, let's put a little bit more into crypto. We should probably be able to see that if we take a look at the Bitcoin chart relative to um, relative to the Nasdaq, um, which uh, which in fact we do, right? So, yeah, you can see that Bitcoin has come up relative to the Nasdaq for the past two weeks. 
um, after taking a little bit of a drop off. So, um, yeah, I mean, this chart is actually looking nice uh, if, if you're going to compare the Bitcoin to the NASDAQ, which you should, because if you want to say that you should just hodl your Bitcoin or hodl your crypto, you really do want to outperform the NASDAQ. It's tech stocks. It's like normal, normie risk. Um, and so, yeah, we've got this this trend line here, um, this uh, like basic pleb line uh, from from the 2021 market, which was broken, retested here in the past few weeks and now seems to be holding a support. Um, I really like how this also coincides nicely with the upper standard deviation levels, right? So effectively, you'll notice that price came in, tested those upper standard deviation levels, and then bounced back above them. So um, yeah, I mean, things really are looking towards the upside for Bitcoin. I would expect that crypto should have, in general, you're right, crypto should have pretty good performance. We might still be a bit early. It could, it could only be the case that we are at the point where Bitcoin and crypto still needs to put that convincing new all-time high into the market to really convince people, hey, that it's game on and it's time to uh, focus on the shit coins, which uh, happen to be right here. Just so happens to be right here, all my shit coins that I have pulled up. XRP, big performer. Okay. Um, you know, I've actually been thinking that XRP at some point should perform beautifully. Uh, I don't know if we want to say beautifully or if we would be aghast at, uh, at, at such a CBDC-esque coin, some bullshit um, project performing. Um, maybe I shouldn't talk so much shit about shit coins, but XRP, um, given that their trial is over, we have been waiting for it to have a nice, big, fat, sustained pump. And um, and maybe this is the beginning of that. So XRP has been the biggest, one of the big performers, one of the biggest performers of the normie, boomer, old school shit coins. Um, so TRX also has been a pretty good performer. But, you know, if you look at it, really everything has been kind of moving towards the upside here. So um, Bitcoin has been leading the way there. Again, I think it might be the case that we need to wait a little bit longer um, for Bitcoin to effectively prove that, hey, we are ready for a new bull market so that people go into the uh, the degenerate speculation. And you can bet that there will be plenty of degen speculation to be had. Um, we'll touch on the ETH BTC chart here really quick. Uh, this thing is still in a holding pattern. Um, I'm still waiting for this thing to break out. <laughs> I hope I don't end up being wrong. But right now, this thing is actually, if I'm going to redraw some pleb lines, this thing it actually is looking like um, kind of a sideways triangle here. It does look like there's a potential for it to break down. <sighs> It, it still makes sense to me, guys, that, that ETH um, should be the recipient. But man, Bitcoin has really just been getting a lot of that attention lately. So um, maybe that's just going to have to be put on hold. Um, let's, take, let's take a look at gold here, and uh, we could probably call it good. So gold um, has defeated the head and shoulders, <laughs> the inverse. Uh, no, no, sorry. <laughs> the head and shoulders. Gold has defeated the head and shoulders pattern and, and made new all-time highs again um, with a little bit of a pullback here uh, at, at the last couple of days on Friday. And Thursday. Um, but that's great, right? So gold is continuing to, to push towards the upside. Um, we even have kind of like this little uh, trend line going on here. Um, one thing that I say about assets that are in a bull market that are in bullish scenarios, rising wedges tend to be broken towards the upside. You can even see that that this thing is, um, you can see that this thing is, is creating this almost like a uh, uh, parabolic move, right? So line one, line two, line three, right? We keep redrawing these lines. And so at the moment, you would maybe draw this line that puts us in this sort of like uh, rising wedge pattern. Rising wedges tend to get broken towards the upside in bullish environments. So if we are in a bullish environment and I tend to think that if we're coming up on some kind of tail risk event, we are probably going to be in a bullish environment up until that point. So um, I do think that the more likely scenario is that gains are on the way. Um, doesn't mean they have to happen next week. Doesn't mean they have to happen, you know, in August, right? But Overall, I think that gains are going to be on the table here um, and continue to be on the table uh, across risk assets and even across uh, across gold as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you got that cash in crypto, if you got that cash in, in the Nasdaq and tech stocks, if you got that cash in gold, you know, you don't want to be you, you don't want to be looking for your bounce opportunities here. If anything, you want to be looking for buy opportunities. Um, that would be my thinking. And um, yeah, I mean, it, we probably just have. Um, have rainbows and sunshine ahead of us here, guys, for, for the price, just in, in a broad sense, right? I'm not, um, again, anything can happen. Washouts happen. Um, things could continue going down next week. In fact, I'm not even sure if the SP is going to go up next week. And this doesn't look so great. It, like this could, this could require some washout time period. But, um, but overall, I would expect that things to trend towards the upside over the coming months. Um, so that's definitely how things are looking right now, at least, uh, from my, uh, from my pleb level brain. Um, Maybe if, uh, let me check the YouTube comments for questions. Let's see, BTC on ramps are all USD that generates demand for the dollar, creating a symbiotic relationship between BTC and USD. Yeah, I think that's true. And uh, Florida said that in the comments here. And um, 
And I think that Tether actually plays a significant role in that more and more. Like if we're entertaining the, the possibility that the Saudis are now selling their oil, the petrodollar is maybe having problems, man, it, it, it could make a lot of sense for the United States to, to pivot um, towards the digital currency arena. And that could be, you know, they could be doing everything behind the scenes. It could be Bitcoin. It could be Tether. It could be some CBDC nonsense, right? They, they could sort of be all of the above. Um, and like if you're if you're the if you're the U.S. government and you need to find a way of perpetuating the the power of the dollar, Argentina sounds like a good plan. Um, getting Tether involved in into Latin America sounds like a good plan. So um, you know all of these things like they really might be pointing at, at kind of a, a sea change here in the monetary paradigm. I, I don't want to go too far and 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 say for sure that's happening here, but you know because it was back in 2008 2007 that I was here. You know I was hearing about BRICS and you know, the, the bricks are going to replace the dollar. And then it's, it's been 15 years and that has never happened. So, um, you know, I do want to be a little bit careful about just, you know, just going off the deep end there, but it does seem like there's the possibility that some kind of monetary sea change is upon us. And, um, and perhaps Bitcoin does have a role to play in that, um, which is going to keep that price, you know, pumped up. I mean, we've got, we've got a lot of big money in there. There's a lot of big finance bros involved with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, Bitcoin's going to, Bitcoin's still going to be a force to be reckoned with in terms of price. Um, you know, one thing that we didn't talk about is just like simple little Monero transactions. Why don't we go? Why don't we talk about Monero transactions? Okay, so we're looking at um, still oscillating here between twenty and thirty thousand, right? So a little bit above twenty five, uh, twenty five k, I'd say here on the average. Um, so that's nice. And um, yeah, maybe we can circle back around and finish off with privacy coins. So Xano, I think, is one of our one of the ones that we at least are optimistic about the possibilities of what could be happening here. So Xano seems to be forming a bottoming pattern, um, pretty good bottoming pattern. Actually, you'll see with this, um, the lower standard deviations have curled under, found support at those lower standard deviations and have now pumped outside of that. So um, that is kind of a bottoming pattern, sort of. Um, eh, I haven't really examined the Xano chart. I couldn't tell you anything for sure there. It's also a small cap coin, so it can be heavily influenced by even just like um, small movements of money, relatively small movements of money. Uh, Firo just trending sideways pirate chain. So R, R is doing reasonably well the past, uh, past week or so. Zcash, no change. Darrow, eh, Darrow's headed for this lower standard deviation area right here. Darrow's probably, I mean, this would obviously be, you know, your, your big like visual point that you would be looking for this chain to go. The privacy coin competition is gearing up. I think we're starting to see more projects come out there. So it's, you know, it could be harder and harder for for individual privacy coins to really gain the the limelight. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that's what price looks like to me. Um, doesn't look like we have any questions. Would you? Oh, one more question. Simon Claude asks, would you sell gold to buy Monero? Oh, you know, we could look the Monero gold chart. We have it right here. Um, it just depends on on how your allocations are. Like, if you have Okay, so if you're doing, if you're comfortable, if you've got a nice fat retirement egg sitting there and you own um, no Monero, well, then you definitely need to sell some gold and buy Monero. Um, if you're holding only Monero and you have no gold, I mean, I salute you for your, um, for your, uh, for your support, uh, for your Monero support. Yet at the same time, um, I wouldn't recommend that people have zero exposure to gold, um, especially if we're looking at the potential for some kind of um, monetary reorganization, right? Some kind of debt restructuring. Um, so just, it, it depends on your personal situation. If you don't have a, a fat retirement stack and you're like trying to make, you know, you're trying to make mad gains. Um, I would definitely, I would definitely hold less gold and hold more cryptocurrencies. If, if I was like trying to go from say like a $50,000, um, net worth to, you know, to a retired net worth, you're just going to have, and, and if you're young as well, right? Like, so there's all these different factors. How old are you? How, what's your net worth? What's your income? Um, what's your risk tolerance? What's your, um, I don't know what, what's your expertise, like what markets do you know, um, stuff like that. So generally speaking, I mean, it, in terms of like, where's the Monero price relative to gold, Monero price relative to gold looks like it's making a little bit of a comeback, um, finding some resistance here in this area. I, I mean, in terms of wave magic, in terms, in terms of the technical now, technical analysis, you would expect to make this area right here. Um, Yet at the same time, gold is also in its zone. Gold is in a zone, I think, where it can perform. So it would be hard for me to say which one's going to perform better here in the short term. I, I don't really have any strong opinions about that. Um, Monero does have the headwinds of the nefarious cabal that doesn't want privacy for the world and privacy in your transactions. So we do have to fight against that. Um, and we know that they that they have price attacked us before. Um, at the same time, we might be overcoming a lot of that in real time. 
Um, but gold is also in its window for pumping. So it's, uh, yeah, I can't, I can't really give you, um, I can't really give you like a, a strong opinion on which one's going to perform better there, Simon.